Hello and welcome to this BBC World Service Facebook Live. My name is Kasia Madeira. I'm a television news presenter. You'll know me from programmes like Newsday and GMT. Today, this is about the World Service and we're here to get behind the scenes and give you a real sneak peek of what goes on in the language departments in this broadcasting house, the very hub of the BBC. Now, we're very lucky because we're getting really in the way of all these people who have just come off air at BBC Persian. Thanks very much, guys. How long was your bulletin today? It was half an hour today. I've got another one in 25 minutes. So they've got half an hour bulletin just done. Another 25 minutes and they're going on air live. So what we're going to do is just grab the presenter shortly. But first of all, what I need you guys to do is message me. Tell me your questions. Get any questions you want. And I know all the people to speak to. Because what we have is 28 different languages. 29 if you include English. So lots and lots of different opportunities. We're now coming through to the newsroom. And we're going to be joined by Golnush. Golnush, you're one of the editors here in the Language Services Unit. It's more than just radio, isn't it? Um, it's becoming more and more television and digital, of course. But here in languages, um, TV has overtaken radio for the first time in this year. So we are very excited to be part of this. Yeah, It's phenomenal. So this newsroom, just give us a quick uh, description. Where are we? Um, we are in Persian television newsroom. Um, Persian has an eight-hour live operation every day. They've just started that, and it will go until late in the night. Um, it's a mixture of live news coverage, which includes domestic news from Iran and Afghanistan, which are the main um, target areas, and also a lot of international news, and that's what BBC is known for and audiences look um, for when they tune into BBC Persian. Of course. And a huge audience as well, one of the largest, I know. It's the second biggest um, television besides um, English in BBC. The BBC Persian, I think, currently has 15 million audiences weekly. So amazing, uh, absolutely. So number. Iran, Afghanistan—they're the and main. Tajikistan. And Tajikistan, of course. So they've just been on air for a half-hour bulletin. We're going to grab one of the presenters, who Nadia. Was Nadia. So let's follow me. Any questions? Keep messaging me because this is all about your questions, and we are going to get them answered. We are going live into the studio. Nadia, are you ready for us? Thank you so much for speaking to us here. Thank you very much. So this is access that you very, very rarely get. Nadja, you've just come off air, and I know as a presenter it is really annoying when you have the camera then put into well, it's, it's, changing roles. It's a completely different uh, dimension to be in front of a different camera. Uh, uh, yes, and I'm just uh, preparing myself for this uh, 2.30 bulletin, so it's a bit, yeah, we have so basically, you want yeah. us to leave? No! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Brilliant. No. Um, tell me a little bit about the programme. So you've just been a 30-minute live bulletin, yes. and your next one is in 25 minutes. Uh, yes, exactly, in 25 minutes. And how long will that one be? Uh, for another half an hour. Yes, uh, 30 minutes. And then how often do you do that throughout the day? What does your shift uh, look like? So a normal shift will be will start at 1.30, 2.30, at 3.30 we have a news summary, 4.30 we have a bulletin, 5.30 we have a summary, 6.30 we, uh, uh, we have a news hour, but we will divide these, uh, these uh, hours, uh, there are two presenters during the day, so it's me and another person. So. Yeah. So you, you've got time to catch yes. your breath, you'll get yes. some sleep yes. at some point. Yes. Now what's fantastic about BBC Persian is that you're incredibly, you're, you're going after a very young audience, so you're using social media, Instagram. Well it's a very interesting question because when we started this channel in 2009, when we launched this channel, we were incredibly young ourselves. So I, when I started presenting the news, I think I was like 25, 26, wow. you know. So uh, I was, uh, now I look back at my, uh, some of my news bulletin and I uh, think to myself, oh my God, how people could take me serious. <laughs> but of course, we come from a country which has got a very big a young audience and they're all very interested and they're all very engaged politically and socially and culturally. So we have a very good conversation, you know, on social media and also during the, you know, programs and these years, we have a very good uh, connection, I could say, with, with our audience. And Nadja, we've got a great connection with our audience. Tim is asking, how do you cope when countries try to block your content? That's a difficult one. Well, uh, that's not my job. 
so my managers would also always find a way. Uh, but also, people in Iran are very clever, especially the young generations. They would, or if it's, it's if it's about the website, they always find a way to, for example, break a filter. If it's about satellite, they always try to find new. And we also, I think, during the years, we also change satellites mm -hmm. to find, uh, you know, new ways to get through uh, to the people. And I, you know, and d during the years, everything shows that our audience just increased. Not. The other way around. A huge audience, a huge yeah. audience. 12.5 million viewers in Iran. That is absolutely phenomenal. Um, also, a young audience, and you're, you're targeting women as well. You've mm -hmm. got hashtag showman. Now, that is a really interactive True. program. True, it is. Uh, hashtag showman. Uh, you know, uh, are you asking about only women or? Or about everything. I mean, we, yes, what we want people, to know is behind what, the scenes. Yes, what of BBC I love is about hashtag Shoma is, for example, if anything happens, for example, grandfather uh, grandfa uh, fall tower when it happened in London, people were uh, as interested as people in London, you know, in Tehran. People were following. Uh, we had a live uh, uh, um, Facebook page, and one of our correspondents was in, in uh, city of London, like uh, near Grenfell Tower, and he was uh, giving a live report. And I could see that how many people from Iran are following uh, this. And these are all the audience of hashtag Shoma. You know, that, like that, well, it touched so many people, very, didn't exactly, it? Exactly. They're, they're very engaged. So that's a, that's a great success, I think. So it's, it goes to show the and story, the quality. And also it's UGC. So, you know, you know, we get a lot of content because we don't have a correspondent in Iran in any of the cities in Iran. So we, we get a lot of contests context and uh, a lot of information from people from like uh, just normal people in the in in town with their mobiles they uh, they uh, take some picture and they send it to us and we we use it in all different platforms so and of course that then yes. gets used BBC yes. you, throughout the BBC news yes. um and Najat, thank you very much thank we're going to get out of your hair because i know <laughs> you're you're preparing for the next bulletin and i know just how annoying it is thank, thank you so you. much for your time so we're going to leave the studio of BBC Persia we've got loads of questions coming in meter says hello from india meter hello to you if you've got a question do send it to us because we're here to answer all of the questions that you've got and also a hello abdullahi thanks for informing us well that's our that's our job isn't it today um, I'm happy that people are watching and sending questions absolutely one thing that is really fascinating um, Robert do is asking do we report in any other languages than English well we've just seen Persian there 28 other languages and um, in a few years time we're increasing that to 40 other languages so quite a lot of languages yeah so 28 languages 29 including English this is which language are we passing through now by Pashto service Pashto service broadcast to um, Pashto speakers in Af Afghanistan and Pakistan we'll try to catch them just before they go under in 15 minutes time. so we're going to get another sneak peek of a bulletin a live studio but this is very important because this is something yes. that we need to remind ourselves that, of course, we do loads of various news stories, but people do risk their lives when it comes to reporting from yes. difficult places. Tell us, who was this? Um, Mohammad Nazir was a very dear colleague in Kabul, Afghanistan. Um, he lost his life in a suicide bombing earlier this month in Kabul. He was driving other BBC colleagues to work. A truck bomb went on in front of, in front of his car. Unfortunately, he lost his life. Other colleagues uh, were injured. Um, and he had a young family as well. Yeah, the young family, yeah. So that's part of the reality of um, covering a lot of the areas we do cover, including Afghanistan. So people absolutely risking their lives to bring you the news. Thank you so much. I know that this was um, quite difficult, but it's important to remind people that it's not just the fun stories. News tends to be quite depressing, and especially from the kind of more challenging environments and countries that we do broadcast from. Many, many uh, challenging countries we broadcast from. It's not only security challenges to some countries. We don't have easy access because of political situation. Najia talked about Iran. We don't have a reporter there. Fortunately, with digital age, we have very close relationship with you know audiences there, and we get news from there. Um, many you know countries across Africa um, you know have their own challenges.
covering, yes. Uh, Kobus is saying fascinating, so I'm pleased that we're informing you, Kobu. And Patrick, Llewellyn, impressive. Thank you very much. Patrick is asking, who are the audiences you hope are listening? Well, I guess it's everybody that has difficulty in getting free and fair and accurate press. Yes, and especially audiences that are un underrepresented in other media in their own countries. So in many countries, women don't have a lot of presence. Um, in the media, we hope to be covering that area more and more. We would like to reach young audiences, but maintain, of course, you know, our core audiences wherever they are. Absolutely important. And we're now at BBC Urdu, and we're really, really happy to speak to Shafi Naki Jemi. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out. Welcome uh, to Urdu Service. When are you next on air? Well, we're about to go on air, let's say, in 45 minutes or so. Right, well, let's disrupt you. And it's let's very nice <laughs> disruption. You're welcome. <laughs> Tell me, which, where are you aiming at? Which countries do you aim at? All over the world. We have our website, we have our YouTube channel, and as well as we focus on South Asia. But you know, the Urdu speakers are all over the world, so we are targeting everywhere where people can understand Urdu, mainly South Asia, and especially Pakistan, or the northern belt of India. And when it comes to using social media and all this new technology that we've got access to, has that been challenging? Well, it's been challenging, but at the same time very exciting. You will be surprised to know that uh, the Serbian program and all of uh, Urdu service output is being followed weekly almost by 12 million people. I think Tony Blackburn probably will shy away. <laughs> 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 And people follow our website, people watch it on our website, but also we have partner in Pakistan, which is Arj TV, and that rebroadcasts our program as well. Uh, there just one quick, s Jennifer saying, loving behind the scenes. I tell you what, Jennifer, you don't want to see the state of these desks. No, the journalists, no, are, no, yeah, we, we won't give you don't. too close access. Yes. Thank you very much sure. for messing us, messaging us. Um, BBC Erdo, you've got Sabine. Now, that yeah. is your flagship program. Tell it us is. about that. Well, Sabine means panorama. Uh, we have the same program in Urdu as radio and as well as on TV. What Sabine contains, it gives you news about your area, about the world, about the region, and it's a fantastic program, all in one capsule. Uh, it's pacey, there's a lot of sound bites, a lot of pictures, and a lot of entertainment. People come to us not because we are first in the business, oh, we have broken the news, oh, we are the first, but they come to us for knowledge, news, and trust. Most of the people you will find, they will say, okay, let's see what the BBC is saying. Let's see what the BBC is showing. It's a trust. That's one of the things that we're going to be hearing a lot, the trust element of the BBC. That's so important to our brand. Shafi, thank you so much. We'll let you get on. And yeah, just tidy up your desk, honestly. Thank you so much. Uh, loving the fact that you're enjoying our behind the scenes. This is a real excellent sneak peek. We're, we're passing... excited to have such large, large uh, guests with us. Um, Where this, are we passing through now? We are passing by the Asia Hub, or the Asian languages, Chinese, Vietnamese, Thai, Burmese, Tamil. We hope to catch Tamil if we um, stay on schedule. If we hurry up, basically. I think that's what you're telling me. Um, one thing that someone is asking, Craig, how many people work in the languages services? Would we, would we know that? There are 6,000 people working in this building. It's a difficult one. Over the over half of the audiences are brought to BBC by languages, but I, to be honest, don't know how many people... It's a tricky one. Them. Let me get you back to that, but let me show you this. This is the atrium of Broadcasting House, New Broadcasting House, or NBH, and down there, minus one, is where I sit. That's where the BBC World News television team are, and also the domestic channel in the UK, the BBC News Channel, radio services like uh, Radio 4... If you go up, 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 on the third floor we have BBC Arabic. We're on the fifth floor, up to the skies, and that's where all the young people are on Radio 1. That's the trendy people. Do you know, I don't think our passes work up there. No, 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 it doesn't work up there. <laughs> Did you know? But it's interesting, talking about um, the building, it was built very transparent and very open, as you can see. The idea is that, you know, Persian can run to Swahili and, you know, get an expert. If there's a news there, then, you know, Arabic can come to, you know, the Uzbeks and, you know, share expertise and interviewees. So that's a pretty exciting environment to work in. It's a lovely environment to work in. It's very dynamic. We're going to show you another gallery. This time we are going to BBC Pashto, where I'm hoping to speak to 
have a look at the gallery because this is the people that make it all happen, the magic of television. Now, you guys are live, so this is possibly one of the worst times to come in. Uh, no, we're, we're actually rehearsing at the moment. You're rehearsing. Well, thank goodness. Rhys uh, is one of the directors here. Rhys, talk to us about what happens here. Uh, well, in Studio L, we go through several different shows for several different services, and we're currently rehearsing past you for the moment, which will go on air in approximately ten minutes. And, uh, yeah, so that's one of the shows we're doing, uh, rehearsing for the time being. Now, I'm going to ask what may sound like a stupid question, but there is logic behind this. Reese. I don't think you speak Pashto, do you? Uh, not a word, no. Uh, <laughs> so, so how do you communicate? Because that's quite a serious point. Well, we, we mainly speak English in the gallery, but we've got the auto cues up here. We'll have cues in them so we know when we're going to graphics or when we're going to a VT, so we can keep track of it with that. And also, it's a case of reading the presenter's body language when they're gesturing towards a question or not as well and little, little, little details help us out there. Do you think you're picking any of it up, though? I should be, but I'm really not, truth <laughs> be told. So. <laughs> See, we're being very honest here, aren't we? Um, Rhys, guys, thank you so much. So, you, BBC Pashto Gallery, and we're going to hope to um, speak to Aman, who is one of the presenters. Uh, first let's of all, this way, yes. let's follow... And also, Emma, uh, the service editor, will be in the studio. Oh, he also right. presents the programme, and both of them are you know, big celebrities in Afghanistan, I'm told. Amazing. Although we broadcast from London, you know, we go know the faces. Gentlemen, thank you so much for letting and us and come and in. Uh, let's have a lovely introduction to our Facebook audiences. So, Emal, I'm uh, editor for Pashto TV. I'm on the presenter of Pashto TV. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for letting us disrupt your working day. I think this is probably the last thing you need, but our viewers are loving the fact that we're getting this fantastic access behind the scenes. It's very rare. Some of the challenges that you have as an editor working here. Working here or working for the Pashto television, that's the main thing. Uh, working for Afghanistan uh, and Pakistan, where we have uh, plenty of uh, Pashto-speaking uh, population, um, they want a lot, and we cannot produce a lot. Or we, we don't have the resources to produce a lot. So demand is huge, and uh, um, perhaps the capacity is less. Will you uh, agree with uh, Yeah, you know that's that? the main problem, that uh, sometimes we are uh, actually... Uh, BBC, uh, the TVU team, the TVU unit, that's the main point that helps us. But uh, the main problem, struggle, as Emal said, is reaching and reporting from the hard places in Afghanistan where uh, fighting and troubles are happening on a daily basis. Well, there are challenges, and we've obviously heard about one of our colleagues who lost his life in, in one of these difficult scenarios. It's important just to remind people just how how engaging and how pressing some of the stories are from these countries. Very much so. And uh, on top of that, uh, um, reporting from that area that uh, a word, a, even a small word, could uh, mean your life. Uh, so it's very, very hard in that sense to, to report from an area where violence is common in a sense, I'm afraid. What, when you see a breaking story, how do you decide what to say? Because like we're hearing, a word can mean so many different things. Uh, it, it, it is also always usually a, a big problem for presenters to be uh, on air and then uh, breaking news comes uh, in. And luckily we haven't um, been, uh, I mean, facing such a problem. But uh, we, we usually get problem um, uh, breaking news and we are breaking with, uh, within our program. But, 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 but the, the issue that um, from Afghanistan or from Pakistan, when something uh, huge is happening uh, for television, finding pictures is one of the main issues. And also to be, as we said, to be careful with what you are saying because uh, people could interpret that uh, in a different way. So um, finding uh, a balance is, in that sense, uh, very, very difficult to, to have uh, a television uh, program without pictures. So. It's challenging, but I tell you what, Rogerio says, nice program. Ali says, thank you so much. Sudarshan says, simply wow. So you know what? Thank you very much for your feedback, and thank you, guys, because I know it's challenging. Thank and you. And hello to all of your Facebook there are, ma there are many of you. Thank you guys. Thank right, you so we're going to move on. Uh, 
this is leaving this particular studio to go to a gallery now. And again, that's going to be fascinating because this is and where... We can catch uh, the Swahili team actually on our way. Oh, absolutely. Now, what is really interesting, we've had a lot of new languages, but Swahili, you're celebrating your 60th anniversary, guys. Oh, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Introduce, we're, we're live on Facebook. Okay, my name is Zuhra Yunus. I'm from the Swahili service. I'm a presenter slash producer slash reporter. We do everything, don't we? We have to do everything these days. <laughs> oh, yes. And obviously, it's changed a lot. World service, it's no longer radio. We need to think past that. Yes, especially now we have television, we have digital. So, yeah, we're kind of busy. And your target audience, who are they? Who are you speaking to? We're mainly speaking to Swahili speakers, who, anybody who speaks Swahili, but mainly they're in Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, DRC. So again, you're going to have some quite challenging, some difficult stories. How do you make that accessible to an audience? Uh, it's not that difficult because we have reporters in all those areas, so it's not that hard as you think. Okay, it's quite challenging sometimes, especially when we have... Uh, difficult stories like fighting and things like that but generally we have reporters all around you've got reporters and I tell you what Tim is saying this is the BBC at its best re well done great work thank you so people do appreciate it which is lovely it's cool thank you we appreciate and when's when are you next live today at around seven UK time well, seven UK time so you've got a few hours left I'm gonna leave you to it thank you so much thank you very and much. congratulations 60th anniversary absolutely thank amazing you. thank you guys uh, right we are now you going can into see, a but gallery in that corner there is um, a TV another TV studio and a TV gallery that's where the Tamil are rehearsing now I guess to get on there in a few minutes Oh, this is the perfect, the perfect time then to interrupt, I think. How stressed are they going to be? Hi, I'm so sorry to... I know you're very busy. BBC Tamil, this is the gallery. Just look, it's, it's pretty small. Yeah, it's a very small team. My name is Jax. This is Juliana, our South Asia chief. And uh, the presenter is inside the studio. We are doing the rehearsals now. Uh, Tamil is a language which has uh, 75 years of BBC association. It started as a radio, then now we moved on to digital, to TV now. We broadcast through the uh, partner station back in India. South Asia, South India is uh, where we are targeting. And uh, every day we take 10 minutes of uh, TV news bulletin, important global news bulletin towards the Tamil audience. Very small team, but we, the latest figure shows that we broadcast to 8.25 million. 8.25 million. Is that is that across television and radio, all the platforms? No, only, only television alone 8.25. If you include uh, digital and radio, it comes to 9.5. That is impressive. Yes, yes. How much feedback do you get? We get a lot, particularly in the digital platform. We get a very good and active uh, uh, participation. The recent example is we asked for three words for Modi's uh, three-year regime. More than 3,000 comments. It was massive, massive. Tamil is one language which is very active in the digital platform and uh, media scenario. You've got a fan here. Sumed says, great to see BBC Tamil team. Uh, BBC is the best service for languages. Richard, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. So we're, gonna, we're allowed to go into the, into the yes, studio it's now. Only oh, rehearsal. Only rehearsal. Thank yes. you so much, guys. Oh, presenters hate this, honestly. I am so sorry. We've been watching you rehearse. Thank you so much for speaking to us. The magic of television. What's going on behind you? It's a green screen. <laughs> green screen. <laughs> Just green screen. <laughs> introduce, tell us, um, what, Hello. Introduce, we're live on the, the BBC Facebook page. Okay. Who are you? I am Yaswada Ravindran. I am today I am doing the news bulletin. <laughs> Fantastic. And when are you going live on air? So we, we don't interrupt. Yeah, at three o'clock we are going. <laughs> at three o'clock. So yeah. we've got a little bit of time. Do you get nervous? Not much. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> I think that's something that we really need to explain that you are you stick 
it never goes away, does it? What we're looking at, so we've got, we're looking at us in the television screen, but when we look at us for real, you've got that green screen behind us, and it's the magic of TV. The computers do something phenomenally crazy, don't they? Mm. I, I notice you're not wearing any green. No, because we can't uh, wear, we can't, otherwise it will, uh, you know, go, um, yeah. It's when we have green screens, our guests, if they're wearing green, they have to change, otherwise the background is then transmitted onto yeah. them. Thank you so, so much for speaking to us. Thank you. Good luck with the broadcast. Thank you. Just a few million viewers, no pressure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, okay. I hope that you have enjoyed this particular special and all access area Facebook right, Live of the um, World Service. Sorry to interrupt your bulletin. I know presenters really hate it. Just Right, some so of the challenges, the obviously the language, and well, how do you work with an English team, a technical yeah, team? How does that all work? Well, the thing is that we as language services, we've been trying, we broadcast not just yeah, to our audiences in vernacular yeah, in more than 20, in 28 yeah. languages at the moment, we're going to be 40 with the expansion of the World Service. And what we're trying to do is that we're not just going to be providing high impact quality content to our audiences in the countries, but we also have a big contribution to the domestic audience in the UK with reporters that specialised you know, in the national issues or regional issues. They bring this kind of information back to the UK audience in English. So there's a balance between the output that we produce. It's not just vernacular as it was 30 years ago, not just in languages, but also now reporting from, from countries and regions to the domestic UK audience. So it's making the world a much smaller place, doesn't it? It's more accessible. It is, it is and, and really busy for us as well, as you can imagine. And tell me, in terms of the challenging stories that you have, because obviously there have been some difficulties in the, the countries that you broadcast, we've hearing a lot about some of the difficulties the reporters, the emotional stories that they have. How do you overcome that? Well, the thing is that if you go to particular areas, such as the Arabic service or even the Pakistan, or, or the broadcast to Pakistan and some bits of Afghanistan as well, of course, it, reporters are exposed to stories such as explosion, terror attacks, sometimes floods, and it can be really distressful. Uh, what we do is that we have, of course, mechanisms in place that we, you know, debrief reporters, see how they're feeling. We have employment assistance programs. But I think above all is really a conversation between you know, the editors and their reporters and the managers trying to provide them all the psychological support and sometimes even production support and journalistic support so they can perform the best they can. And when it comes to talking in different languages as well, we've heard that a lot of the people, the technical side, are English. How do you communicate the bog standard things? How to stop presenters from talking sometimes? Well, most of our presenters and journalists are bilingual, so they do speak English, and that makes the you know communication pretty seamless. But um, in a region, we do have technical people that speak vernacular. So, for, for example, in Delhi, it's going to be our biggest bureau overseas, so the BBC biggest bureau overseas. We do have local technical uh, crew and stuff that are able to speak uh, the vernacular and communicate with London in English. So we do have this profile across languages of having journalists that are able to speak their language in English. Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much. And sorry to interrupt this rehearsal, but we'll wish you lots of luck. We've still got a few minutes, so I think we're going to finish in this section, because it's always lovely to hear that music, isn't it? It gives exactly. me tingles in my it tummy. It's adrenaline high for us. Doesn't yeah. it? Doesn't it? Never it? becomes repetitive. We, Amarot, is saying thanks, and we're getting lots of Peter Marvellous Tall. Thank you very much. Like I'm saying, this is access that we very rarely get. But when are we going to expand? When are we going to hear 41 languages broadcast from this building? We're already expanding. Um, BBC Somali um, from television was launched about a month ago, so that's already one uh, new television program. Uh, more Indian languages um, are going to be launched soon. So we're expanding every month, but until 2020, we hope to have another 12 services launched. And are you watching out? Because we're always, when it comes to the media, we're always chasing what our audiences are doing, whether it's social media, how they're using. Mm. Any predictions for what we can expect in the next three or four years? <laughs> Putting you on the spot there. <laughs> That's a million dollar question. But we are um, keeping you know, close eye on the trends. And you know, television is no longer television. Radio is no longer radio. We are facing audio and video. And video is in Instagram, Telegram, you know, Facebook. So reporters are no longer working on a television, you know, product, or, you know, 
feeding to all different platforms, and we are mm, kind of working on new designs and new language for you know television and digital. And we're going to let Jamshid have the very last question before we sign off Hello, here. Jamshid. Jamshid, how do different language departments communicate? Well, in all these different languages, that's a good one. Is there, is there much communication? Because obviously there is we a lot of communication. As I told you, this building was designed so open, so everybody can you know, freely find each other, share expertise. BBC today is a lot about sharing, so at, you know, BBC Afghan colleagues bring Afghanistan to the domestic audience, domestic, audience, um, you know, domestic reporters you know, bring uh, UK expertise to the rest of the world. So if we communicate easily, some language difficulties, but you know, everybody speaks English in this uh, building. And English speakers are picking up Persian and Arabic and Tamil words. Absolutely, and rightly so. Thank you so much. Thank you it so much to all, all oh, the audiences. The audience has been fantastic. Uh, Jesse, it is amazing. Jesse, thank you. I think so. And just to think, English is just one of the 41 different languages that the BBC will be broadcasting in. It's wonderful to have you along with us. Any questions, just keep them coming our way. We've got still lots more to see you. But for the time being, from me, Kasia, here at Broadcasting House at the BBC, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.